Bienvenidos and welcome friends, my name is Crossbite and today we're going to be looking at a program that can quickly and easily attach object files to your Vroid Studio character or other character as long as it's in a VRM format. So the program is called VRM1 Editor and you can access it by going to booth.pm. Quickest ways to get it are to just go ahead and use the link that I'm going to include in the description of this video. You can type in the link that is in the URL bar up here at the top, or you can just do a search within Booth if that's easier for you. You do need a free Booth account or Pixiv account, but once you have an account, you're just going to go ahead and get that free download from this website. And VRM1 Editor is a nice, simple executable, so nothing too fancy with the install that you have to worry about. Once you have it downloaded and installed, go ahead and open it up. And it's a pretty simple layout. Up at the top left, we're going to click on VRM, and that will allow us to import our VRM file. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I have my standard Crossbite model. Click on that, open it up, and it's going to import it in the standard T-Pose that we're used to seeing. On the left-hand side here, you can adjust where the camera is for this little picture area, which will help you create a thumbnail. You can change the positioning, the zoom, as well as change the skybox background to a solid color if you so choose, and you can adjust the values there to get the color that you'd like to have. On the bottom, make sure you hit capture when you're all done, otherwise it'll just keep the image that you have in the top left there. You can also click on other on the left hand side there, and it's going to bring up all your information about your avatar that you probably entered into Vroid Studio before you export it. A nice little extra feature is that it also includes the height of your model, so if you don't know what the height of your model is, it's right there for you. Up at the top left, we're going to go and hit object this time. We're going to go find an FBX file for this tutorial. It does accept other file formats if you need something different, but FBX is a pretty common file type. So we're going to go ahead and load up our Panda Coffee Cereal. As you can see, this is an asset that I made that is pretty big. Please make sure you go follow my friend PandaVT on Twitter and or Twitch. As a quick aside here, and if you want to use this model to follow along, you can go ahead and get that in the links below. I'm going to go ahead and select it here on the right side under the object section. And I want to attach it to the right hand for this tutorial. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the body part I want. And I'm just going to pick a random digit that is on the right hand here. So once I choose that, it is going to snap it to that bone. And it's going to change the position coordinates automatically once you do that. You can adjust these manually. So one thing that I obviously need to do is adjust the rotation and it will face the same way that the palm of my hand is facing. If you're not using the same example, of course, make the adjustments as you need to. I can see that it's obviously a little bit big, so we're going to change the scale to about 20%. So I'm going to enter 0.2 on all of these scale values, and that will put it to about the right size for a cereal box. It is now kind of clipped through the hand, so I do need to do a little fine tuning here under the position. I'm just going to adjust these values a little bit to get it into the palm of the hand and make it look a little more natural as if I'm actually holding the cereal. So once I've made my adjustments, I think I'm pretty good. And if you want to follow along any further, feel free. If you want to jump to the end from here, you're welcome to do that as well. We're going to spend another minute getting into a little bit more advanced stuff. If you click on the object, you also have the option to move it with the arrows and or rotate it with the sphere. If you use Unity or Blender, you may be somewhat familiar with those. You can also dive into the material and shader of the object. I'm going to go ahead and just show you what these look like, but I want you to know that there is no undo button at this time, so you can't control Z, you can't go back, but you are... Welcome to go ahead and load shaders, your textures, what have you, even change the color. But if you load something incorrectly or you remove your texture, there is no going back. You're going to have to either reload your VRM and object and do this again, or if you have saved your project, load that older project. So as you can see, there is also rendering type as well as the metallic and glossiness settings that you may see in a system such as Unity. This is a Unity-based program, even though it doesn't require Unity to be installed to utilize it. So if you would like to do something that is a little quick, a little easy, but you don't want to have to load up Unity to, to mess with your settings, this might be a good option for you. It does have things like emission and rim color, things like that, which again, you can mess with all those settings right here. 
as I said before, please keep in mind that there is no Control Z, there's no Undo, there's no going back if you set those. You can also go ahead and mess with the bone settings if you want. The, the VRM spring bones, gravity, direction, drag force. There's, there's a lot of things that you can add to this depending on the complexity of your object. Because I'm just using a rectangle, I'm not going to really mess with anything in this today. But again, if you want to get into the more advanced features but you don't want to load up Unity for everything you have to do, this is kind of a good option. Once you're satisfied with what you've got, go ahead and hit Save VRM up at the top and save your file with whatever file name you would like. I don't necessarily recommend overriding your existing VRM just in case you need to make future changes or you want to have multiple versions of your VRM depending on what you're doing. So since I've got it saved, I'm going to go ahead and hop over to VC face and make sure that it is working as expected. Because I did not hit capture while I was messing with the thumbnail, it is going to just show my little cat ears photo, which I had previously, but I do know that it's the most recent one I loaded, so I'm going to click on that. In the little preview window on the right side there, you will see that I am holding the box now. So I'm going to hit start to see that, yes, it does stick with the bone, it does track with the hand, so it is there and it is functioning as you would expect an object to do. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. See ya!